Hello and thanks once again for joining us for another reflection. Uh, this week I'm going to continue with the theme we looked at last time, uh, which is about reading the gauges, um, that illustration that I've been using to try and establish how we're doing spiritually. And this week I'd like us to think about the most important gauge, well anyway the most important gauge for me, I'm sure you'll have other ideas, but the most important gauge for me is the oil light, uh, because if the oil light comes on, it doesn't matter how the other gauges are performing, I'll stop the car as quickly and safely as I can. Because if I ignore that light, I know it's going to be incredibly expensive further down uh, the line. When I think about the oil light, I think about love. Christ's love in me and flowing out of me. Um, th there's no question about that. We know that love is preeminent. We know that in God's economy, that's how it should be. God is love and he seeks love in us. Let me come to these verses from the message, which um, you may be familiar with. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate <laughs> or, the dis or the disintegration of an engine that doesn't have enough oil. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day. And if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps but don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gone nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. You see this emphasis everywhere in scripture. When Jesus was buttonholed about the greatest commandment, didn't hesitate. He says, love God, love others, love yourselves. Uh, Peter, uh, when uh, he was uh, speaking into this subject, says, above everything else, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Paul, writing to the church at Galatia, says the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. And I'm sure that's what all of us want to see in our lives, because that's what we saw in the life and the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, he was somebody who embodied love. Francis Frangipan um, asked some really good questions about love. He says, is your love growing and becoming softer, brighter, more daring and more visible? Or is it becoming more discriminating, more calculating, less vulnerable and less available? He adds, this is a very important issue for your Christianity is only as real as your love is? Great questions. And when I look at that oil light, uh, which to be honest comes on every time I start the car and then I look for it to go out, but when I look at that oil light I, I ask myself questions about uh, important relationships in my life. Uh, I start of course with my marriage, I think of Sue, uh, and I ask myself um, how, how's my relationship with with Sue because frankly it doesn't matter what my relationship is like with others if if it's not right there it's just not right and so I think about um, how I use my words with Sue are they, are they are they gentle are they soft are they are they encouraging are they nurturing or are they something else that's far less when I think about my relationship with my children and grandchildren how much time am I giving them and when I spend time with them, have they really got dad? Have they got granddad? And then I think about uh, the people who irritate me. Um, this is important because it's a really important gauge for me, this. Because if, when I think about those people who irritate me, I I'm just feel all uptight and anxious and you, you know what I mean. I know that there's something intrinsically wrong and I have to run to the Father and ask him again to fill me up with his love. 
a couple of years ago, Sue and I bought um, our current car. Uh, we bought it because we needed something that would pull our caravan and we really like uh, our new car. But one thing we've discovered is that it uses a lot of oil. Uh, in fact, about a litre of oil every 1,200 miles. That They didn't tell us that when they were selling us the car, by the way. <laughs> but I've discovered that as my car uses oil, so do I go through Christ's love in life. I go through it more quickly than my car goes through oil. So I need to keep running back and topping up with Christ's love. Because just like my engine can't generate oil, so I can't generate love. I just have to receive it. And I keep asking the Holy Spirit to fill me again and again and again. Especially if I'm going to be mixing with people uh, where I know it's going to be a difficult situation. Lord, would you help me see those people through your eyes and not through my critical spirit. Help me to see not the speck in their eye. Help me, Lord, to see the plank that's in mine. Really important things. And of course, when I think of love, my mind turns instinctively to Easter, which is just around the corner from us. And when I think of Easter, it starts off for me when that journey around Palm Sunday, when Jesus comes to Jerusalem and he weeps over it. And it just speaks to me again about the importance of loving people. Even people we don't know. Uh, people who aren't in the kingdom yet. I, I was reading, uh, one of my heroes, by the way, is Amy Carmichael. And she wrote, If my interest in the work of others is cool, then I know nothing of Calvary love. If souls can suffer alongside and I hardly know it, then I know nothing of Calvary love. And then, of course, we move on from then to Gethsemane, a place that speaks so graphically of love that is gritty, unsentimental, sacrificial. And I read somewhere, I wish I could find the author uh, for this, it said, In Gethsemane, Jesus meets the dreadful silence of heaven. There is no reassuring voice. No dove descends. God has already spoken. And his son must obey. Which speaks so powerfully that love is far more than an emotion. It's an action. It's a movement of the will. A determination that even in the tough times. The difficult, arid, barren times. That we resolve like Christ. To press through with love. For the people that God has called us to love. And then, of course, we get to Calvary itself. And in C.S. Lewis's poem, Loves as Warm as Tears, we read these words. Love's as hard as nails. Love is nails. Blunt, thick, hammered through the medial nerves of one. Who, having made us new, the thing he had done. Seeing with all that is our cross and his. Now I, I know I can't generate that kind of love. I have to receive that kind of love. And so when I look at the oil light, I'm reminded again to go back time and again to the Father and ask for him to fill me with his spirit. Because I want to be a man who's known for somebody who loves Jesus and loves others. And I want to be part of a community, a Christian community, that are known increasingly for love than more than some of the other adjectives that we're known for. Let me finish with these verses from Jesus. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Let's pray. 
Lord, today I submit myself to you. Quicken my conscience with your holiness. Nourish my mind with your truth. Purify my imagination with your beauty. Open my heart to your love. I surrender my all to your purpose. I worship and adore you. And God's people said, Amen.